Hello everyone, uh, this is Lisa. Welcome to today's video. Uh, today I'm going to be colouring with polychromous pencils and I'm using an image from uh, Santoro from their gorgeous range and it's called Puddles with Love. So I'm going to start off just by stamping the image using my Misty um, onto Nina Solar White card and uh, this is the £80 card. And at the same time, I'm going to stamp onto my masking paper because I'm going to do a little bit of masking later on. Well, what I'm going to actually do is start off just by talking you through a little bit about how I colour the image. And then I'm going to just come back with a kind of general view on what I think about the pencils and, um, and so on and so forth and different papers and how they work, that kind of thing. So as I said before, I'm colouring on Nina Solar White uh, for this image and this is actually quite a smooth paper and that really does make quite a difference to how the pencils work. And I'll talk a little bit about the paper uh, later on, but the sort of most important thing that I've learned while I've been practising and, and it's only sort of been a few months since I've had these pencils, but it's it's the same for most pencils is to work in layers and to start off with a really, really light hand. So, you know, you can't take the colour away so easily, but you can always add to it. It's a bit like adding salt to cooking, isn't it? But yeah, so um, I do sort of start using a really, really light hand and I tend to go around the area that I'm working on just from the um, from the edge leaving a white highlight in the middle and that's another thing that I found really useful is to really really try and keep that white highlight. It's so tempting to cover the whole area I think in a in a light tone and then just sort of darken in the shadows but I've just found that if I try and keep a white area there it really sort of helps me um, build up my layers and, and the colouring. And you can actually get really good layers even from using just one pencil. I mean, if you keep a light hand and you just change the pressure a little bit on every layer, you can really build up um, really good depth and dimension even with one pencil. But on this part of the umbrella, and I'm sorry, I'm jumping around quite a lot here. I do move my paper around a lot so because <laughs> it's easier to colour certain areas when you when you turn it but it does get a bit better so I'm aware that it goes off camera a couple of times and I just use two greys for this area and then I go in with a black towards the end but I think you could almost get away with one grey I really don't think that um, you know if you vary your pressure you can get really good dimension even with one pencil so you don't need to have loads of pencils um, I don't think to get some dimension, but I do think the um, black areas do sort of make a difference. And I keep my hand really light here. You can see um, I'm I'm putting some black down, then I'm taking my darker grey and just sort of blending that out. And, and it's not totally different to Copic colouring, but you do have to be light with your, you know, with your pressure, which you don't really have to worry about with Copic colouring. So I really sort of, um, I do sort of enjoy doing this. It, it does take a long time. I think the umbrella itself probably took me, I don't know, maybe about 15 minutes in the end, which is quite a long time for colouring. But I think the, it just gives a completely different look. Well, certainly it's different to my Copic colouring at this stage because that's another thing that I'm also um, still learning. So just continuing on with the image, I actually use some different pencils here. The um, downside I've found with the Faber-Castell 60 set is they really don't have a lot of good colours uh, for skin tone. So I actually took some of my Derwent Colorsoft pencils for this part um, of the colouring and they have slightly better options for skin tones. But I'm going to have a look and see if I can pick up some extra sort of singular pencils to add to my collection for skin tones but um, that that's the only sort of downside to having the 60 because I think you 60 colours is generally a really really good range of colours um, 
for for anyone really. I know they do a, a larger set of 120, but I don't personally think I'm going to need those. I can pretty much do whatever I want to do uh, with this set and perhaps just adding a few extra uh, skin tones and maybe some greys as well. So again, um, I'm just colouring, I'm just going in with a, a couple of pinks now. I use a sort of light and a dark pink, but again, I build up the layers more uh, with pressure than necessarily with the colour. And just a note about the light source. Um, I haven't really worried too much about the light source. I really just wanted to talk about the colouring and how you can add layers and get dimension. Um, the the I've, Yeah, the, the light source almost seems to be coming from the front, so um, directly onto her face, but it's not uh, definitive. But I do think the way that I've coloured it, it does sort of give you an idea of how you can build up the um, shading and so on. So I'm going to move on to her coat now and um, I take just a lighter blue and I'm just starting from the edge, leaving a white highlight in the middle and I just literally just do a really soft layer around the outside and then I just continue to add to that, build up a little bit more pressure, another layer which darkens it again. And at some point um, I do go in with a purple uh, once I've sort of built up the colour a little bit here, you'll, you'll see here that I take a slightly different colour and then I blend it out with the blue as well. So that's generally how I work. Um, just again, it's a really, really light colour of the purple because I'd rather just put a little bit down rather than too much. And and um, I just do both sides of the uh, coat pretty much the same way and I try and keep a little bit of lightness in the, in the centre. I do actually take some of the brightness out of that highlighted area but you, I do still manage to leave it light so it's always a challenge for me to make sure that I leave a little bit of, of, uh, of a highlight. It's something that I really have to focus on and think about. So just coming back quickly to the different types of papers, uh, what I found is um, the watercolour paper that I've used um, does tend to give a very different look to your coloured pencils because it has a bite to it. Even if you use a smooth side of the watercolour paper, you do still, your pigment in your pencil really does grab onto that paper. So I think you can get fantastic depth uh, with watercolour paper and that you don't get in the same way with the Nina for instance and I think the Nina gives a slightly smoother blend but I just don't feel for me personally that I get the quite the same depth as I would get um, with the uh, with the watercolour so and those are the only two that I've tried for now so I'm still really learning um, I'm sure it's going to be different on craft paper but the craft paper that I have is quite smooth so it, it may end up with a similar look um, to, to the Nina but we'll uh, you know I'm going to see when I try that out. And just a quick note on the pencils, um, they're oil based pencils, I do think they blend really well on most uh, uh, surfaces as I say the dimension and the look is different on different paper. I haven't really experienced any breaking. Um, I think they're a fantastic quality. And as I've said before, really good range of colors in the 60 set. Um, they just seem to blend well. Um, as I say, they, they haven't broken on me yet. I do try and keep them as sharp as I can while coloring, because I think it's, it's much easier to get that definition. And even if you're coloring a larger area, you can just tilt your pencil so that it's more horizontal, which lays down a layer of color a lot quicker. So even though the nib is, is pointed, you can still get quite a lot of color down in a larger area. And that's just the way that I prefer to use them. So I'm just faffing around here, you know, adding a bit more color in here and there because that's what I do and it's hard to leave it. And I just thought rather than have a hovering in the air, I'll just put a bit of grey down um, and a little bit of shadow under her feet so that she's grounded to the paper and not just floating in the air. 
And what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to take um, my masking paper and I'm going to take a new stencil. I haven't used this stencil yet. Uh, from Simon Says Stamp and just add um, a little bit to the background. I just thought it would add a bit more interest. So I've taken some Distress Ink and I'm just going to um, just going to stencil a small portion of the background with the large um, <laughs> the large dots. And I wasn't sure how this was going to look actually because they are really large and the image is quite small. But Kathy Rakusin uses this stencil a lot and it always looks really lovely. So um, I thought I would use it and added the um, dots to the background. I thought they looked really nice. And then in the end, I decided to Distress Ink a pink background. I just use Pick Raspberry for this and um, I'm using Nina £110 for my base. I thought that this would sort of lift the image, take it, picks up the pink from her dress. I just added some craft foam onto the back and um, popped it up onto the panel. So it was really simple. I mean, I did actually add a sentiment, which is uh, W, no, it's not, it's a Hero Arts um, sentiment from You're So Lovely. And that finishes my card. I just decided in the end that I would just add a little bit of um, Sakura uh, glaze to her eyes. And sometimes I do outline my image with a black liner at the end, but I don't feel like I lost a lot of the black with this colouring. So I decided not to in the end. And I just decided to leave it as it was. So anyway, that finishes my card for today. Um, I really hope that that was useful for you and that you picked up a few hints and tin, uh, tips along the way. I actually really did love how this turned out in the end and I hope that you do too. But thank you so much for watching and um, I will list all my supplies over on my blog and um, I hope to uh, catch up with you again soon.